Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church morning prayer service. Um, and also welcome to the second week of Epiphany. Today we have no saints designated in our church calendar and that and therefore we'll handle that as we always do. Uh, we will remember the saints of our own lives. With that, we'll be starting on page 76 and quickly moving to page 80. <clears throat> Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's where he made it. Come, let us adore him. Turning the page to 82, let us say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, but he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our psalm today is number 25, found on page 614. We'll read it together responsibly by whole verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, forgive my sin, for it is great. Who are they who fear the Lord? He will teach them the way that they should choose. They shall dwell in prosperity, and their offspring shall inherit the land. The Lord is a friend to those who fear him and will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and have pity on me, for I am left alone and in misery. The sorrows of my heart have increased. Bring me out of my troubles. Look upon my adversity and misery, and forgive me all my sins. Look upon my enemies, for they are many, and they bear a violent hatred against me. Protect my life and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have trusted in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for my hope has been in you. Deliver Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson. A reading from the book of Genesis. At the end of the 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven. It went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him and to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put his hand and took it and brought it into the ark, into the ark with him. 
He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark, and the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. In the six hundred first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and saw the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives, and every animal, every creeping thing, and every bird, everything that moves on the earth, was out of the ark by families. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing odor, the, uh, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of humankind, for the inclination of the human heart is evil from youth, nor will I ever again destroy every living creature as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and hot, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle. Let us turn to page 86 and say together, canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the people. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, Cry aloud inhabitants of Zion. Zion. Bring, out your, Bring joy. out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson. The second lesson. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Hebrews. Since then, we have, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness, and because of this he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify him in becoming a high priest, himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said, who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle. <laughs> Turning to page 94, let us say together, Canticle 19, the Song of the Redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, 
and sing the praises of your name, for you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The third lesson. A reading from the Gospel according to John. When Jesus was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about anyone, for he himself knew what was in everyone. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you did not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now turning to page 96, let us affirm our faith together in the words of the, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Keep peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope <laughs> of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power. We may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as we gather ourselves to offer our prayers before God, I invite you to add your own. We pray this day for the church, for our Anglican Communion and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Diocese of Bukidi within the Church of the Province of Uganda, for our own Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, for our Diocese of Maine and Thomas, our bishop, for the Congregation of St. Thomas in Wynn, for the basic right of all people to adequate shelter, and for our Racial Justice Council, and for our Parish of St. John's, our Priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed, <clears throat> the Soul family, Louine and her family, for Presiding Bishop Michael Curry, for Laura, Lily, Corky, Oliver, Liam, Nancy, and Andrew. We offer continued prayers for faith, Will, Jackson, Tony, Marlin, Barry, Mykola, Sarah, Ross, James, and Pion. We pray for our homebound members, including Robert, Krista, Lily, Erling, and Eileen. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations, and for peoples in places of violence or oppression, and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We continue to pray especially for the people of Ukraine and the innocent victims of the fighting in Gaza. We pray for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, that the peoples of all nations will find ways to mitigate the climate crisis by cooperating with God's earth. We pray for our enemies and for those who wish us harm, and that all people come to understand that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is to first expand our understanding of who our neighbors are and then love those neighbors as ourselves. We pray for our nation, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error. <clears throat> and for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, members of Congress, especially Susan, Angus, Shelley, and Jared of Maine, for Janet, our governor, and Kara, our mayor, and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish. We pray for Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. And we offer prayers of thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays during this week, including Noah and Sophia. And finally, we pray for the departed. We pray for Lois Soul, Howard LaRue, Evie Robbins, Paul Rudman, Melissa Brand Selnow, and Eugene Nardi. We pray for victims of the wars in Ukraine and in the Holy Land and for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. 
<laughs> Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. <laughs> Excuse me. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> Turning to page 101, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for your, our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above, above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray. Give us such an awareness of your mercy so that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Now let us say together a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <clears throat> this brings us to the end of our service today. As always, we are happy and grateful that you've been able to be with us and hope that you'll be able to join us again soon, perhaps tomorrow morning at nine. In the meantime, may we all know the uh, presence of God in our lives this day and find ways of reflecting that presence out into a very needy and a very hurting world. Again, thank you for being here. May God bless us all this day. See you soon. <clears throat>